Hello everyone, what's up? It's me again. Uh, welcome back to another video. Um, in this video, I want to share with you guys my league start plans for 3.24 Necropolis. Um, I apologize if my voice is a little sore today. I am slightly sick, but it is what it is. But yeah, in today's video, I'm going to talk to you guys about my three Atlas trees, and then my league starter, which is going to be a Bone Shatter Slayer, and then also my second build, which I think is going to be Righteous Fire Chieftain, using the Traitor and a Ruby Flask to help get 90 uh, all res. So yeah, let's just get started. Maybe this is too much information for one video, but you know, YOLO. All right, so basically, as you guys know, you have access to three different trees this league. Um, we don't know yet like when exactly we're going to unlock them, but the basic idea is I have one for League Start, which is this one, and then I have one that is fully specced out into Breach and Legion, and then I have one that is specced into Delirium and Blight. And there's been a couple observations that I made, and those are that um, in every tree, you have like exactly enough points to fully spec into like two complete mechanics. So this tree, for example, it just so happens that Breach and Legion are like very, very close together on the tree. They're both like on the right hand side. And then same thing with Delirium and Blight. Like Delirium and Blight are all on the left side of the tree. And of course, you know, Breach and Legion are both beneficial for SSF. You know, you can farm Timeless Jewels um, and I'm going to need to farm the Traitor. So Legion is good. And then Breach helps you get your Breach Lord invitation done and also gives you Chaila Splinters. So yeah, definitely good to farm all of these mechanics. And it just so happens that, you know, if you take these together, there is like synergy and you can save points. And also, you know, here I have Delirium and Blight together, which is also good because if you pop a Blight during a Delirium, the Delirium pauses and then you can get a lot of splinters. So yeah. And then another observation I made is that um, in every tree, you can like fully spec into two complete mechanics. And then you also have enough points to get like end game map drops. And you can maybe sneak in like some map sustain and then another third mechanic as well. So like in here, I have, you know, delirium blight, but then I also have end game map drops, ess essence, and then map sustain. Here is legion and blight, but I also have end game map drops and I also have some map sustain as well. And of course, each tree also has a influence type. So this is Exarch, this is Eater, and the league start is Exarch. So yeah, that's basically my three trees. And then uh, for the league start tree, this is pretty similar to like the trees that I've used previously. Not much to say here. You know, you basically go for, you know, Essence, and then Kirak, Map Sustain. Uh, there's Expedition, there is Harvest, there is Betrayal and then end game map drops, and then Searing Exarch. Pretty standard stuff, don't really need to go into it. There's like a couple differences that may be interesting to talk about though. Um, in 3.24, they rebalanced the like plus chance for various league content nodes. So in this tree, exactly as it is right now, there is 100% uh, chance to contain Harvest, there is 100% chance to contain an expedition, and uh, there is also 100% chance to contain betrayal. Um, if you can see here, uh, your maps will like basically, well, I don't really know what's going on here. It should be 100% chance. Um, not really sure why it's saying 8% because I've specced 100% into this. That must be a bug. Oh, X2. Okay, so this is like 110% chance to contain June because I've taken all of the uh, plus June chance nodes, I think. Okay, so yeah, that's basically my league start tree. And then I guess another another thing that's different that might be interesting to mention is that Essence is like slightly rebalanced now. There's actually four different Essence wheels, um, but I think the only good ones are these two. This one is mandatory because it gives an additional Essence, and then this one uh causes one essence to go to the highest tier and these are like very low investment nodes that are also very powerful so i go for both of these these other two i don't take there is this one here uh 15 chance for three additional 
but I didn't take it for two reasons. One, it's far away and, you know, it's not convenient to go there. And then two, if you take amplified energies, only one essence will go to the highest tier. So like adding more essences is like not synergistic with this one because only one will go to the highest tier. Whereas previously you would have more of an argument to take this because you could like, you know, duplicate the shrieking essences, but now it's only one going to the highest tier. So I don't take this. And then there's another one here, but I don't think this is good at all. This is basically, um, uh, this is very confusing in my opinion. I don't know why anyone would take this. This one is basically, you can use a remnant on corru remnant of corruption to replace all essences with a random one. I don't really know why you would use this. And then it just makes a map boss stronger as well for seemingly no reason. I don't really know why someone would take this, but maybe someone can explain to me why this could be good. So yeah, I basically just take these two, which is very helpful because now I, you know, can spend a lot less points on essence, which is great. And then expedition is basically exactly the same as before. And then harvest is also exactly the same as before. Betrayal is a little bit different, um, but it's mainly the same idea. You take the same nodes here and then, yeah, just whatever. Um, I have opted to not take intelligence gathering. And my logic here is that if you have like, a hunt, if you have blight, if you have betrayal in every map, then the utility of intelligence gathering goes down because you're going to get so much influence anyway. Whereas like intelligence gathering was mainly good. Like if you got 10 maps without betrayal, then you would like get a safe house for free basically, which was good. But I think it might not be necessary if you can get betrayal in every map. So yeah, that this is basically my Atlas strat. So to summarize, a uh, leak start tree is this. It is essence, betrayal, expedition, harvest, Kirak, map sustain, end game map drops, exarch, harvest. And then at some point I'm going to build this tree. And then this one will allow me to progress my breach lords. It'll allow me to farm some Breach Splinters, Chiula Splinters. Of course, we focus Chiula here. And then also, it will allow me to farm a bunch of Legion if I want to, since it's maximally expected to Legion as well as Blight. And then uh, my main goal with farming Legion is to, well, two things. If I get the Orange Jewel, it is beneficial for my Bone Shatter character. And if I get the Maraketh Jewel, it is beneficial for my Righteous Fire character due to Traitor and also dexterity, incidentally. And then the third tree is basically this one, which is just Blight and Delhi. And, you know, the Blight is basically just there to farm, you know, anointments for whatever build you all want to play. And then Delhi is just there for farming cluster jewels if you need them for some build you want to do, or, you know, just whatever, just farming Delhi for like a challenge or just general loot or whatever the fuck you want to farm for. So that's basically my three trees that I think I'm going to go for. Um, the tree that is the most suspect is the third one. Um, you don't need to farm Blight or Delhi. So I guess like if there is like some strat that is like really good, I may change this tree to that strat, or I may use the third tree just to like get challenges because I am a challenge Andy and that's basically it for my Alice plan. Um, okay, cool. Let's shift gears to talk about, uh, builds. Okay, so as I mentioned at the start of the video, um, I'm going to be starting with Bone Shatter Slayer. Yes, I know, you know, it got kind of nerfed. You know, it's a little bit nerfed now because of the call to arms thing and you know, all that bullshit. But I think it's still playable. I've been messing around with POB. And the TLDR is that you're going to have to use one unset ring. And the reason is that call to arms makes it so that you need to use a call to arms support. I don't know if they added that in POB yet. Let's see. Can I click this please? Call. All right, they don't have it in here. So I'm just using, just pretend one of these ancestral cries is call to arms support. So uh, because you have to use call to arms support, you lose a socket. And the problem with that is that there's nothing else that you can like remove. You know, like you need your six link bone shatter, obviously. You need the four melee totems. Uh, that you need the four link for the melee totems. Like you're not going to remove a melee totem. You can't remove multi totems. You you also cannot remove maim because you would be losing 500k DPS, which is not worth it. 
And then, you know, you need Berserk as well. Like without Berserk, your single target potential is much lower. And then, you know, of course, you need the War Banner as well. And then you need Determination, of course. You need Frost Blink as well for the instant dodge, you know, very important in like stressful fights. And then, you know, you have Ancestral Cry Call to Arms. And then, you know, Leap Slam, faster attacks. Like you need both of these for mobility. Uh, arrogance precision also mandatory i guess you could technically drop arrogance precision if you manage to get enough flat accuracy but in order to do that you would have to like have flat accuracy on like every item at a very high tier like you would need like tier one on both the rings you would need like tier one on the helmet and tier one on the gloves and then you may also need to additionally take accuracy on the tree so I guess you could do that, but that's so difficult that I feel like it would be easier just to run an unset ring, right? Um, but if you do manage to get like insane gear with like insane accuracy, of course you don't have to run the unset ring then. You can just, you know, drop arrogance precision. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, CWDT, Molten Shell, Vulnerability, all mandatory, Blood Rage, mandatory. Like if you don't have Blood Rage, you're gonna have 14% less attack speed or uh, decreased attack speed. And then you also won't get frenzy charges in mapping. So definitely very important to use Blood Rage in my opinion. So yeah, and then you need Pride of course as well. So all this basically boils down to the, like there is so much socket pressure that removing any one link would like significantly reduce the playing power of your build, I guess. That's a term I just made up, playing power. So yeah. Basically, you'll have to swap out one unset ring for a uh, one amethyst ring for an unset ring. So it is kind of cringe to lose the amethyst ring. You know, losing 27 chaos res with the catalysts is pretty cringe, and it makes it a lot harder to cap chaos res. But I think the build is still totally playable. You know, um, losing the hillock quality is also a concern. But I guess you'll just have to like use perfect fossils or the beast craft that you can corrupt an item to get 30 qual, um, as someone else pointed out. So you just make sure to like, you know, stockpile your perfect fossils and that specific beastcraft, and then you should still be able to hit 30 qual on your axe. And then, yeah, other than that, I think everything is still completely playable. Um, losing the Veiled Chaos Orb is bad, but then again, losing Veiled Chaos Orb is a nerf to every build. So I'm not gonna talk about it here because it affects every build, not just Bone Shatter. But it is particularly bad for this build, I guess, because it's going to make crafting the rings a lot harder. It's going to make crafting your boots a lot harder, of course. So yeah, just keep that in mind. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to craft items, but hopefully <laughs> hopefully either ROG or the new League mechanic can carry. So yeah. And then I guess another thing that uh, I, w I want to mention is that... Um, Sorry. Uh, I guess in the new league, like they, there's no longer a thing where essences can get duplicated. Like previously, uh, shrieking essences would like cause the essence to be duplicated, and then you could like use melee splash to like kill both of them at the same time. And in Bone Shatter, if you kill both essences at the same time if they're next to each other, you get three times the damage because um, your auto attack hits the first one and then your additional strike hits the second one, and then both of them have a melee splash mechanic, so the splash from the first one hits the second one, and the splash from the second one hits the first one. So in total, every monster is getting hit like three times, basically. Or is it three times? Yeah, it is three times, right? Because you have a strike, you have an additional strike, additional strike makes a splash, the first one makes a splash. Wait, is it two times or is it three times? I don't really know what's going on, but it's at least double. It's at least a double damage. Um, it, it's at least double damage for sure. So yeah, I, I think it's double damage. Anyway, I don't want to get hung up on this. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me, but yeah. But in, in this league, essences obviously no longer a duplicate. That's, you know, they changed the way that it works. So that's like a small nerf to like Bone Shatter's power in SSF because you know, you end up killing a lot of essences in SSF because that's like one of the most reliable ways to improve your gear. So, you know, essences no longer being duplicated basically means that it will take slightly longer for Bone Shatter to kill essences compared to previous leagues, but hopefully it should not be too big of a difference. So, yeah.
I thought that would be interesting to mention. So yeah, I'm going to be league starting with Bone Shatter Slayer. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit nerfed because of Call to Arms support. But other than that, I think it should still be very, very playable. Um, just make sure to get your Unset Ring. Make sure to craft double minus seven cost so you can sustain your mana. And then take the Mana Leech thing and then you'll be fine, I think. So yeah, I will be playing this build. Bone Slayer, dude. Login. Okay. And then for the second build that I'm going to play, I want to play Righteous Fire Chieftain. Yes, I know I played these two builds last league, but you know, I, I, I think it's going to be a good build. I think this is going to be a good build. And so the reason I wanted to play this build was because the new Ruby Flask gives you 5% max fire res. And if you can get 40% increased flask effect, that's plus two, right? Because every 20% increased flask effect means that your max fire res will go up by one. And I thought this was a pretty cool interaction. And it just so happens that if you use Trader, the Trader Keystone, you can regenerate, you know, four charges per empty flask slot every five seconds. So that's 0.8 charges regenerated per second. And then you can also combine that with micro distillery belt to have a implicit 30% flask effect. And then it's also very easy to get another 10%. You just craft it onto your belt. That's it, 10%. And that gives you 40% increased flask effect in total, which would mean that the Ruby flask will have 100% uptime and give you plus seven to max fire res, plus seven. So you can see if I've toggled this on and off, it's plus seven all res on Chief 10. And then because it gives plus seven, um, you don't even need to run purity of fire anymore because that's like so much. Like it's very easy to get the rest of it. I'll just show you right now where I'm getting my fire res. Uh, how do I look at my fire res? Here we go. Okay. So as you can see here, um, how do I even understand this? I don't even know what's going on here, but... Oh, here you go. So if you look at if you look at every line here that says fire resist max, um, I have 75 base. I have seven from my flask. I have one from barbarism on the tree. I have one from the implicit on my body. I have another max fire res from the small node on the tree. I have one from the implicit on my boots. And then I have plus two from prismatic skin. That's a notable on the tree that gives plus two. I have plus one from Reservation Mastery, and I have plus one from Armor Mastery. So it just so happens that if you get plus seven on the flask, and then you take every possible implicit on your gear, and also every possible plus res on the tree that's like nearby, you can actually get 90 fire res without Purity of Fire. So then you don't have to get, you know, Aura Effect. You can just get like Determination Effect on your body, which gives you armor. You don't even have to take like this node here to get aura effect. You know, it's just, you can just take this one here and you're good. Um, and then also not running purity of fire means that you can run summon skitter bots. So here I have skitter bots. And if I take this on and off, this is giving me 578k damage. 578k. And the reason that's so much is because um, fire builds don't really have any like increased damage taken. I guess I have cover in Ash, but still, like, if you look at the shock that Skitterbots is giving, uh, you can see that it's 17%, right? So that's like 17% more damage taken, which is pretty good. Um, oh, I even had cover in Ash already. But yeah, you, you, you can see there that, you know, obviously the Skitterbots is pretty good. A lot of increased damage taken. So, and also it, it has like a small chilling effect as well. It's like 11% chill, which is not great, but, you know, 11% chill is better than no chill. So it should make like single targets a little easier to deal with. So yeah, that's basically the new tech. It's just Trader with a Ruby Flask with 40% increased Flask effect, which is all gotten from this one belt. And then that enables you to have a very easy way to get 90 all res. And then once you get 90 all res, you can just take like whatever normal shit. Everything on this tree is pretty normal. I'm not going to go into it. It's the same as Lost League, basically. Um, yeah, basically the same shit. You just don't take this because you don't need Purity of Fire. And you take this for Reservation. And it's basically at Anoint, Growth, and Decay, of course, for the regen and damage. And that's it. 
Um, and then, of course, another side effect of the trader that is cool is that it gives dexterity. And this is a build that suffers a lot from lack of dexterity, in fact. Um, like, whenever, when I played this build, I was, like, taking, like, two different agility nodes just so I could get, you know, uh, or two different, like, 30 dex notables just so I could, like, cap my dex. But if you have this, every single small thing here will give you four dexterity. So if I remove this, I'm actually, like, losing, like, 40 dexterity total or something. So that definitely helps a lot. It just, it just incidentally helps your attributes. So, you know, very good, very good jewel. Um, so yeah, that's basically my plan. And um, I think this build is going to be pretty okay. It's going to be pretty tanky. It has 2,000 regen. It has like 6,000 life. Uh, you know, it has like 3, 4 million DPS, which is pretty good for SSF Righteous Fire. Of course, it's going to be very tanky. You can explode the entire screen. And if you get Ignite Prolif on your gloves, you can like proliferate the Chieftain Explode and you'll be able to do, you know, basically everything in the game. The only thing that this build isn't able to do right now is Simulacrum. And the reason is because you don't have... I, I wasn't able to find a way to get like crit protection. So like without without like crit protection, I feel kind of scared to go into Simulacrum. But I mean, maybe maybe there's a way to... Maybe there's an easy way to get crit protection somehow. But yeah. But like you also don't need to do Sim. So yeah, it's whatever. But yeah, and then, oh, also, uh, this build compared to like my last version of Righteous Fire, another small side effect of using this flask tech with 40% increased flask effect is that you can actually like have pretty good uptime on your granite and quicksilver flask as well. Here I'm using two empty slots so I can optimize my ruby flask uptime. Um, and then, you know, just not using a life flask means that I have to get a CB immunity either here or on a jewel. I chose to just get it here with one point, but you can also get it on a jewel. Um, but maybe it's better to use a watcher's eye here, so I don't know. And then the only thing this build doesn't have is like bleed immune. Um, I mean, you could go over here, but it seems a bit unhinged to go over here just to get bleed immune. So I'm just not bleed immune. Hopefully my regen and less damage taken uh, mastery should be enough, hopefully. And then the Chaos Rose is also very easy to cap on this build. You have a lot of free suffixes. Um, oh yeah, and then uh, going back to the flasks, like this build, um, if I show you my, f sorry, flashbang alert, flashbang alert. So this build will have 100% uptime on the Ruby and it will have like 10 seconds of uptime on the Quicksilver with like seven seconds of downtime or something. And same with the granite, because granite and quicksilver consume the same amount of charges. So this is like a little mage blood at home spreadsheet that I made. Basically, you'll have 100% uptime on the ruby, and then the quicksilver and the granite will have like reasonably high uptime, which is okay because you don't need these to be active all the time. Um, if you take a look at my armor, like even without the granite, I have like 20,000 armor. And if I pop it on, I have 37,000 armor, which is like really high. So, you know, for a build like this. So I think that'll be pretty good to play. And then the Quicksilver, you know, with the 40% increased flask effect, uh, raises my MS from 30 to 100, which is pretty good, you know? And like, of course, in mapping, both of these will always be up because you are killing. So yeah, it's going to feel really good to have like a 100 MS Righteous Fire build on top of, you know, the Leap Slam, um, and you're running Leap Slam with double scepters to get maximum damage, which is, the I believe, the optimal way to play RF after the nerf that was last league. So, yeah, that's basically the build. And as for, like, what I'm going to farm with this build, uh, so I think Bone Shatter is going to be, like, a pretty decent build to start, but I can totally see Bone Shatter, like, I, I can see Bone Shatter like being a little bit annoying to play like in T16 expeditions because like if you if you take the Oppenheimer expedition node, like Bone Shatter Slayer has like a little bit of a hard time surviving. You know. So I figure if I can try to like re-roll Righteous Fire Chieftain with Ignite Prolif and Explosions, I can basically farm these expeditions like so free. And of course, if you have 
uh, occurrence rate of expedition in your maps, and you have a build like Righteous Fire Chief 10, you can basically farm expeditions like super free. Like you just go into any map, explode the whole thing in like one second, and then you pick up the loot and then you, you know, keep going. So I think it'll be like super fun and super easy and brain dead to farm expedition with Righteous Fire. So I am excited to roll a Righteous Fire character as my second build. Leak start, bone shatter slayer, re-roll Righteous Fire Chieftain, farm a bunch of expedition, farm some harvest, farm some betrayal, farm some legion, uh, you know, breach, blight, deli, whatever, and then maybe think about a third build after that. So yeah, that's basically my plan um, for the league start. That's my atlas tree and my two starters, I guess. And then third build, obviously TBD. I really want to do something with uh, the new unholy might, which converts 100% fizz to chaos. So I'm going to try to POB some random shit. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be dog shit. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, but this is my league start plan. You know, I think it's pretty solid. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I just, just wanted to make a video today to talk about my plans. So um, the links for these POBs will be in the description of the video. And I'll also link these Atlas trees as well in case you want to take a look. Maybe, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing like super crazy in here. You know, nothing is like super insane. But yeah. Um, all right. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I may or may not make some more videos before a league start, but in any case, I'll catch you guys on league start on Twitch. Um, also, we have a Discord server. Uh, okay, bye.